Welcome back! We're on week three of our gallery wall quilts along and today we're going to work on unit B. Now last week we had unit A and it was fairly simple. Unit B is not quite as straightforward. It's gonna be a little bit more work. So we have our layout of where all of our fabrics are gonna go. If you're not using either the by land or the by sea options for this. You've got your coloring sheet where you've put this all out. If you're new here and you don't know what's going on, we're doing the gallery wall quilt. Links are down below and you can find the pattern at carolinamorepatterns.com. So I have unit B all in here. I need to get my little mini iron heated up so it's ready for me. And we're making a couple different parts and then we're gonna be putting them all together. So, Let's see here and get all my pieces out. Okay, so for me, these oatmeal colored pieces are my background and I can go ahead and put these aside since I won't be needing most of them at least quite yet. These four squares are the first pieces I'm gonna be using. So I'm gonna get those, this light color here is my inner frame and some of these got a little wrinkled during the being all bagged up for a couple weeks process no big deal I'm just give them a press and they'll be as good as new I want to lay out my squares in the order that I will have them and I like these arrows going up and down so that's going to be directional to me this I think I want that flower over on the side like that. This obviously has little flowers on it, so that's directional. And this one, I don't know if I have a preference. Maybe I'll have the berries on this side to give balance to this being on this side. Okay, so now that I have those, I can start stitching together, stitching them together. And if you were here last week, you know how much I love my chain piecing. So I have one, two, three of these, and I'm going to just stitch one to the top of each. And now I can start stitching them to each other. And they're just a little long. So I have, let me refer to my paper again, yes, my blue on the bottom and my stripe next. And then I can add this piece on top there. When I end, heel up, press your foot up, and I can clip my threads. And you'll notice I haven't pressed throughout this whole process because you don't need to press until you're putting another piece of fabric across a seam. So since all of these seams are parallel, they're all going in the same direction, until I add the sides where I'm going across these seams, I don't need to worry about the seam allowances and pressing yet. Needle up, press your foot up, and clip my thread. So now I have my pieces all in a row. Now normally I would probably press towards my border fabric, but this is a little different. I have such a light inner frame on this that I really don't want it to, um, I don't want those seams to show up behind those light, the light fabric. So I'm actually going to press away from the frame and towards the focus fabrics instead. Okay, so now I have these two short pieces that are gonna go on the top and bottom after I put on my long sides. Now our trick that we learned last week when putting on long sides like this is because this is all smooth and this has our seams, we're actually going to put the smooth piece down on the bottom even though it's smaller and so that way we can manage our seams better. Now I'll do the same with the other side. Okay. 
Now that I have these on, I can press. And while yes, with the last one, I pressed away from my border fabric, there's just so many seams here. And to push them, pre <laughs> to press them back over on themselves is just, it's going to add too much bulk. So even though it's a light fabric, I am going to press towards that inner frame. Okay, so now I can stitch on my top and my bottom. And I will press this. Okay, I have the inner border and now I'm going to put on the outer border. First by putting on the top and bottom, pressing, and then just putting on those sides. Since this is so long, I can actually just wrap it around in order to do my chain piecing. I don't even have to snip. So I have my top and bottom stitched on, and now I'm going to press them before stitching on my sides. So now that I have this picture frame all put together, and feel free to be gentle about pulling away any of these threads that happen. Um, if that one doesn't want to come gently, I'll have to hit it with some thread snips in a little bit. So now that I have this on, now it's time to start putting on some of the background pieces and build this piece out. And this is one of those tricks in this pattern to get it all just right. So you can double check it's the background piece that's the same length as this. And we're going to put it on the side. And make sure that you have this right side up and that you're putting it on the right side. Needle up, press your foot up. And of course, I ran out of bobbins, so I'm going to fill up my bobbin and I'm going to go ahead and stitch this one again. Now when you run out of thread, you just want to go back about an inch before the thread ran out and re-stitch over that portion and then keep stitching. And that segment where you've got the thread that then ran out and then the new thread on top of each other will keep everything secure. You don't have to pick out all your stitches. Next is adding this piece along the bottom. For this next side piece and then the next bottom piece, there are actually two different pieces sewn together before they're sewn to the block. So. I'm just going to take these two right sides together. These two pieces actually happen to be the right, happen to be the same size. So if they aren't the same size, you grab the wrong pieces. And then this one is actually a little bit longer than this so far, but that's fine because we're going to add a side strip beforehand. And we've got our tiny little background piece to attach to that. Press both of those. Now 
Now I'll take this piece and I've got my frame piece on the top and my background piece on the bottom. And I'm going to stitch that on. And now this piece should fit just perfect and I'll stitch that on. Now it seems a little crazy to have a random frame strip here and a random frame strip up here, but these are parts of other frames. So this is the left side of the frame that'll be on this side, and this is the top piece of the frame that'll be down here. And when everything gets put together, it will make sense. The reason we're doing it this way is because this prevents us from having to do any Y seams or crazy sewing before we put it all together. Now that we have this large left segment stitched together, we're ready to move on to the other pieces. I'm going to set this aside for the time being and just gently fold it up but not crease it so it's just out of the way. And then I can collect the pieces that I need for our other frame. If we go back to our coloring page, this frame is this piece of fabric and I still have the tag on it. This was fabric four. I'm just going to use the iron real quick because I'm sitting here for a couple weeks. Got some little creases in there. Okie doke. So now I'm just gonna step, stitch the top on, the bottom on, press it, and then stitch the side on. And this piece is all set. practicing those techniques we learned in week two where we're doing our needle up and our presser foot up before we pull the fabric away. Now because this fabric is directional I want to make sure that I have it facing the top and that I add this side to the right side. I don't want to add it to the left side because I already have a left side piece in the larger unit that we've set aside. So I'm going to add this to the right Okay, I'm going to set this piece aside for the time being, along with my other piece. And now I'm going to work on, this is the last of the frames for unit B. And just like always, I like to kind of lay out my pieces and see where I'm at as I work on this. So I have some larger squares and some smaller squares. And then also some larger background squares. And then I have some side pieces. And you'll see that I only have one of these top side pieces, and that's intentional. The bottom side piece is actually in another unit, and so we won't be adding that on here. I need to take these two larger pieces of each color, and I'm going to turn these into half square triangles, and then these smaller squares are all going to go in the corners of this inner frame piece. So I'll set aside my sides and then I'm going to use a pen and a ruler Now there are different kinds of pens you can use and I definitely have an opinion about the pens that I use. This is one of the friction pens and it it doesn't disappear with heat, but the ink coloring lightens significantly. It turns white with heat. So I never want to use it on the front of fabric because I don't want to leave white lines anywhere, but on the back of fabric where it's not going to be seen, it's just fine. If you don't have a fancy pen or a water soluble pen, a great option is using a mechanical pencil. Those are actually filled with graphite and that's a great option for putting lines on the backs of your fabrics. So I'm putting just a diagonal line 
on the back of all six of these, the large and the small. Now with the large ones, what I'm going to do is actually stitch a quarter inch away from the line on either side. And with the small ones, I'll actually be stitching on the line. So even though we're putting lines on all of them, we're treating those lines different, and that's something to pay attention to. So I'll start with these half square triangles, and for these I'm going to stitch a quarter inch away from the line. Once I have these stitched, I can just with a sharp pair of scissors, or you could use a rotary cutter and ruler if you prefer, cut on this line. These ones we can square up to two and a half inches. And if I look, I've actually done a really good job on these of making them two and a half inches. So I'm just going to trim off my corners. But you may want to square them up depending on how wonky yours got, which can happen depending on your quarter inch seam, how quarter inchy it is. Now for these pieces, I'm putting them on the corners like this. I'm going to stitch on that line and then they're going to get folded open. So I'm doing what's called a snowball block, but usually a snowball block is square and I'm doing this on a rectangle. So I'm just lining it up right sides together and stitching. So now I have all four of these on. I'm just gonna trim about a quarter of an inch away. Again, you could use a rotary cutter and a ruler if that's your preference. I just have this pair of scissors handy, so it's super simple for me to just go ahead and snip. And it doesn't need to be a perfect quarter of an inch. You just wanna make sure you have a good seam allowance. Once you have all of these trimmed, you can give this all a good press. And then just press these open. Fabulous, fabulous. Okay, so now we have these side pieces. And remember, we're skipping the bottom. But we have our top and our right and our left. And then we have these half square triangles. Now two of them we're going to set aside. We're not using them here. We're gonna use them when we do this bottom block. So we'll set these two aside. The other two are going to go here and here. So you wanna make sure that all four corners here and all four corners here have the same color matching. You don't wanna accidentally turn this a quarter or a half because then it'll be wrong. And I don't like to unpick. So I'm gonna go ahead and stitch both of these corners onto this middle. And then I can also at the same time stitch both of these sides onto this middle. So I can do a little chain piecing. Now before you stitch this on, you wanna make sure that you're right side up with everything so you don't stitch it the wrong way. I have done those things before and I try not to make the same mistake twice. I'm going to press both of these in. And we haven't really done any magical nesting seams yet on this series. So I'm going to do that here. Since we press these in, we're going to press these ones out. And 
can you let press your foot up and then we can give this a press and look what I managed to do I put it on upside down even I'm not immune from making mistakes I'm gonna go ahead and rip this out put it back together and I'll be right back Okay, let's try this again. There we go. I want these oatmeal colors out. And now put it together and stitch. And again, I'm going to feel to nest those seams. I will say, although I stitched it together wrong, those points were perfect. Did I do it right this time? So much better. Okay, so now I'm gonna go ahead and press it. So I just have three background pieces that are gonna put these three pieces together and then we're done with this unit. I know unit B has been a little bit more tricky and it's worth it. Let me tell you, when we get this quilt all put together. So I'm going to start with the top piece need to press her foot up and then no need to press yet because I'm going to take this piece that we set aside and put it on top and make sure that you have the borderless side over on the left because this is the way we need it to be able to put it all together. Okay, now that we have both on, we can just do one press of both at the same time. My first piece, make sure that I have it right side up, make sure everything lines up right, looking good, looking good, and then I can stitch these together for my frames. Is it starting to look like a gallery wall yet? Here, where we have our seams coming together, we're going to nest those seams, match everything up. Get our perfect points. All three pieces are put together. We can press this last seam. And then we're just gonna add our other two background pieces and unit B is done, which also means we are halfway through the body of this quilt, just two more units, and then we'll be putting it all together. We have the right piece and then the top piece. Make sure everything fits. And this top piece should be just a little too long. Yep, perfect. Let me get this stitched on. Alright, the side is on. I can go ahead and press this and then put the top on and we are done! Unit B, we're all done. I will see you back here next week for Unit C. 
In the meantime, make sure that you're following me over on Instagram. I'm Craftmore. Make sure you've given this video a thumbs up. If you have any questions or comments, leave those down below and subscribe to this channel so you'll be one of the very first to know when the next week of the Gallery Wall Quilt Along is up here on YouTube. Thanks, for much, thanks so much for watching and I will see you next week. Bye-bye.